Right, 9 April 2020, and today I want to talk about the four factions that have emerged in the MDC after the Supreme Court ruling. So each faction is very distinct and they've got their own interests, but what is in common among all the factions is that they all realize that they need Nelson Chamisa. So Nelson Chamisa is the person that they're all trying to attract as the four factions. And I can classify these factions as the Chamisa faction, the Kupe faction, the outsiders faction. That is good. People like Tendai Biti and Washman Nube, and then the Monzora faction. So those are the four distinct factions. And I want to go a little bit into these factions. So you'll be surprised that I say there is a Chamisa faction. Yes, indeed, there is a Chamisa faction. And this Chamisa faction is made up of mostly professional people, people in the diaspora in South Africa and the UK. And those people that were appointed by Nelson Chamisa, who came into the MDC as appointees by Chamisa after they were not even supposed to be there. These are the people that are in the Chamisa faction. If you look at the guys in the diaspora, most of the guys are hoping that in 2023, Chamisa wins and they'll be able to come back home and become ministers and get positions, senior positions in the government of Zimbabwe. So that is the first factions. These people are not necessarily in the day-to-day -day running of the MDC, but they've got direct contact to Nelson Chamisa. They are talking to him and they're telling him, you must not negotiate with Kupe. You must play hardball. So this is the faction that is mostly made up of people in the diaspora. Most of them are even MPs and uh, maybe senators or councillors. These people were not supposed to be in those positions, but they owe their particular positions to Nelson Chamisa. Some of them still even live outside the country, especially the guys in South Africa. They fly in and out of Zimbabwe as senators or as MPs or as councillors. They're not resident in Zimbabwe. So these are the guys who are in the first faction. This faction is saying, let's not negotiate with Kupe. So that is the key part about this faction. And they're at the moment very confused about the situation that is okay. They, they are just waiting. They're playing the wait and see game. Now let's go to the Kupe faction. The Kupe faction is very, very small. It is made up of people who broke away with Tokzani Kupe. This faction feels cheated. They feel like Nelson Chamisa took away the position that Dr. Kupe was supposed to have. They are mostly based in South Africa and Matavelli land. They, they feel that Chamisa went up there because of tribe. It was a tribal appointment. They feel that everyone else is against them. People just support uh, Chamisa because of, of the tribe. So this is a very distinct uh, group. They've got the judgment that Tokzan Kupe must be acting vice president. But they don't know what to do with that judgment. At the moment, the, uh, Tokzan Kupe has not managed to take leadership of the MDC after the Supreme Court judgment. She is not the one who is driving the conversation as we speak right now although the supreme court says she's going to be the acting president so Tokzan kupe is going in for another second loss the people who support uh, Tokzan kupe as i said mostly are the people who broke away with her and it is on the view that everyone else is working against Tokzan kupe on tribal basis so this is a second and distinct uh, faction now, let's go to the third faction. This faction is the most cunning faction. And it's also powerful. This faction is uh, the one where Tendai BT and Welshman Nube are sitting. These guys were not supposed to be in the MDC. They got into the MDC alliance or MDC through the back door. And they became vice presidents. So, they don't want to lose these positions. And they don't want to go back to their own political parties. So they're doing everything in their power to stay in there. So you can add here the job scholar. 
the job scala was not supposed to be here in the NDC. He, you know, he had his own political party. So these guys, they have the most to lose. If the MDC was to go back to its original form, these guys will lose the most. And particularly, the, the MDC is unlikely to go back to what it was, where it had three vice presidents. So the next structure of the MDC that we have, whether it's MDC Alliance or MDCT, there's not going to be an M a three vice presidents. So even if the MDC Alliance goes ahead, one of these three is going to lose their positions because the MDC made their resolution in Guerrero that there will no longer be three vice presidents. This faction is secretly hated by the Chamisa faction. So the people in the Chamisa faction don't trust these people. They don't like Tendai BT and Washman Nube. They tolerate them, but they don't like them. So they are probably going to lose the most. And if everything goes according to the Supreme Court ruling, that means Tendai BT and Washman Nube, they will just be by themselves again. They will no longer be part of the new MDC. Right, so that's the third faction. And this faction, is, they think they can outsmart or handle Chamisa. That, that's one thing I wanted to mention. They, they, they are the ones that are putting people out there to make statement. Young guys like Ostalos uh, or Beistole, they're working for this faction of Washman Nube and Tendai These guys are also working with some of the people who are working behind the scenes like the ghost accounts this is the faction sitting with the youth they, they they're doing some things that are even shocking nelson chamisa faction when the nelson chamisa faction hears that these guys have been doing these things they, they don't even know about it they're, they're like what are they doing <laughs> so that is the most active faction if you see uh ostalos going and making people sign letters and all that this is where it is coming from Let's go now to the Monzora faction. This is the most powerful and strategic faction. The Monzora faction believes that Chamisa has sold the party to outsiders. It is made up of the original leaders of the MDC. Most of them, even who are on the Chamisa side, who, who pretend to be on the Chamisa side, are sitting on the Monzora faction. These guys are career politicians, unlike the Chamisa guys who are academics. These guys in the Monzora faction, they're career politicians. They know the MDC from the beginning. They head all the other factions, but they have structures. So they, they've got people in the structures all over the country. Mzuri, uh, people like Mzuri, Monzora, Komich. They've appointed people in the structures. They can make a call to someone in the structures and tell them, what's happening here, brother? Let's do this. So this is not a faction that you, you can play with. Now, let me show you why I say this faction is strategic. This faction realized that, that the Supreme Court said Tokuzani Kupe should run the uh, extraordinary Congress within three months. But because they hate Tokuzani Kupe, they don't want her to succeed in running that extraordinary Congress. So their strategy is that they will make sure that Tokuzani Kupe fails to run that extraordinary congress in three months and then in four months time they will personally run that congress so in this faction as i said you have people like uh, monzora komichi and all the other original mdc leaders you also have the other people that were against nelson chamisa's ascendancy but who don't want to be with tokazani kobe you also have in these factions in this particular monzora faction you are going to have the current MPs, senators, and councillors. They are most likely to jump into this faction if they are threatened with recall because they know that these are the guys with the power. These guys are Harare based. So you have to understand the difference between a Harare based faction of Tokuzanuku of um, Monzora and the Blawai based faction of Kupe. The Harare based faction, based faction, has got the ability to influence people to be on the ground. Whereas Tokuzani Kupe doesn't have people on the ground. That is the difference. So, how are they planning to deal with Chamisa? This Monzora faction. I have a feeling that just before Congress, 
or as time goes on, they are going to reveal something very big about Nelson Chamisa. They've got a hidden card that they're going to reveal before the Congress to totally knock out Nelson Chamisa. So this is my view of this situation. Now, what, ca what caused all these factions in the MDC? The first reason is the lack of a system of grooming leaders. So it is not possible in the MDC to rise up to become a leader without being in the factions, faction system. And also, there is weak structures. The MDC has weak structures. And this was done by previous leaders to maintain power. And this is also something common in Zimbabwe. You realize that most political parties in Zimbabwe don't have a vice president. It's deliberate. Right. And then let's go behind the scenes. What has been happening behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, all the four factions have not been talking to each other. Nelson Chamisa and his faction, they've receded into the background. They, they don't really know what to do from now. The, the other factions, like the, the outsiders, Tendai Biti and uh, his people, they've been lashing out, you know, using their youngsters like Ostalos and Obeistone. And then the Kupe faction does not know what to do. They don't have any contacts. They don't have any people on the ground. The Monzora faction has been organizing. It's been working hard, making sure that they prepare. So what is needed now is for the Chamisa faction or Chamisa to take charge of this situation and provide leadership. The problem is that Chamisa, since the judgment was released, he has not given a statement of unity. So that was the first thing he was supposed to do. The fights were supposed to happen, but in-house. At the moment, fights are just happening everywhere. So Chamisa needs to come out and give a statement of unity. Everyone must be united. You can have all the other fights, but everyone must unite. So that is the first thing that Chamisa needs to do. However, the problems in the MDC cannot be fixed without respecting the constitution and without going to an extraordinary congress. Because you need to clean up the leadership structures. Everything is a mess. So it's actually good for the MDC to go to the extraordinary congress. So my suggestion is that Chamisa needs to make that statement of unity and then he needs to find a mediator or a negotiator who is going to come in between these factions and organize them according to their interests under himself. Then the MDC will be back again to one faction, which is led by Nelson Chamis. Otherwise, if he doesn't do that, the whole situation is just going to blow up and he's going to lose control of the situation. Right, this is where I'm going to end today. Thank you very much. If you're watching this on WhatsApp, send it to as many people as possible. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, Please like, comment and share.